to celebrate our deliverance. It's time to celebrate our deliverance this morning. And I want to take you through some things this morning that uh, you may not understand and you may not uh, see uh, until today. And I hope I can show it to you. I want to show you to, uh, to you today that the time that God spent and how in time God worked to seek our deliverance. Our Lord, uh, before the foundations of the world was laid, he had a plan in place. He had a time laid out on that uh, we would be rescued from sin. He had a time laid out that we would escape certainly the bondage of sin, the prison that we were in. He had a time laid out and that we would be set free from it. And I'm so thankful I've been set free from it. And if you're saved today and you don't think you've been set free from sin, then you're not trusting Christ. Because I can tell you this morning that Christ does set us free from the power of sin. The power of sin has no more control over my life. The influence of sin does, but the power of sin does not. So I, I've escaped and uh, our Lord Jesus Christ opened the prison doors as God laid out the time for that to take place. And also, he gave me safety. When he let me out of uh, sin's prison, I became safe under the wings of his. I'm sheltered under his wings. I'm in his hand, and I thank God for it. I'm one of his sheep in his pasture, and so I'm safe in, as long as I walk with him. Thank God for that release that he gave me. Thank God for it. I'm telling you, the prison of sin is a bad place to be. The prison of sin brings us nothing but sorrow and heartaches and depression. And we know that there's a way out, but most of the time we don't find that way out. We don't look for it because we're so bogged down in those sins. But God had a time and he laid it out that we could celebrate our deliverance. And as we celebrate this Christmas and we're thinking about the birth of Christ, that all played a role in God's timing that he might set us free. And so I want to try to cover some of those things for you this morning. But before I, I get started into that, I want you to Think of one thing. If you're here today and you don't know Christ, you are under the sentence of death. You are under the sentence of death because of sin. That you are under that sentence of death of being separated from the Lord Jesus Christ for eternity. But if you're here and you don't know Christ, you are under the power of sin. And the only way that power can ever be broken is when you turn to Christ and give your life to him. In time, God took care of it. In time, God gives us now an opportunity to celebrate. And we must ask ourselves this Christmas, how will we use our time? Will we use our time to celebrate the world and the things of the world? Or will we use our time to celebrate the victory that Christ has given to us? This morning here at the church, I want us to celebrate our deliverance. But I want us to understand God's time. And some things here in the scripture that our Lord is going to show us. And Genesis chapter 18, I want you to look with me, if you will, in verse 10. Now here we find that God is uh, talking to Abraham, and he's talking about him and Sarah's condition. As you know, uh, Sarah had not been obedient to God, and neither, neither had Abraham 
if they had didn't had did not wait on Abraham or done not wait on God to give them the seed of Isaac, but they took things into their own hands. But here in verse ten. Here's what he said. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it at the tent door, which was behind him. God is saying here to Abraham, in my time and in your time, you will be dealt with accordingly. You will be given a son accordingly. Now we must realize that in God's time, it belongs to Him. And that we cannot do anything to change His time and His plan. Abraham and Sarah had tried to hurry up God's plan and God's timing. But God rejected their efforts. And He said, I will deal with you accordingly. Your time, your time will come, a son will be born unto you. So I read you that verse to tell you, time is important. Time must be associated with God. And I say to you that God's time was perfect. And I say to you today that God's timing is perfect for you. If you're here today and you don't know Christ and you don't know how to celebrate Christmas, God says, my timing is right. And his timing is right because you're here this morning to hear the message of Christ. If you're here, then the timing is right for you. Don't mess up God's time in your life. When he's calling you, heed that call. But it Also, he said in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27 or 26, if you will turn there with me. Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 26. Now look at what he said here. For then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. In other words, he is saying here, this plan for this baby to be born, and the suffering of Christ was planned before the foundation of the world was laid. But now, once in, in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. If we read this, and it says, and we read it like this, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once consummation has set in for the ages. The consummation of time has set in for the ages. So it was the timing and it was the age that Christ would come and be born in the consummation of his time. Then we also read in Galatians chapter 4, that in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son made of woman under the law. In the fullness of time, God sent forth Christ. Now, what am I trying to tell you? I'm trying to tell you how important time is. Time comes for you to decide in this life where you want to spend eternity. God has provided through his time the escape from your sins. God has provided in his time to open the prison doors of sin and set you free. But now he says, I have fulfilled my time. And now he says, it is your time. It is time for you to think about what you're going to do with what God has done for you. So in the fullness of God's time, he sent forth his son. Why? So that you could be delivered when your time come. And your time might be today. It might be tomorrow. But your time will come. And he wants you to be able to celebrate 
the deliverance that he has provided for you from sin through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, there's some things here that in Matthew that I want you to see. And I, I don't know how much you study the scripture. Most of the time we're, we read the, the birth of Christ, the conception of Christ, but we don't read the beginning of it. And so today I want you to find out something about lineage now. The lineage, you see, in God's eyes, he had a program. And that program had to follow the lineage that God had laid out. In other words, God had chosen a family, and that family was Abraham. And it was through the lineage of Abraham that the Christ was to come. Now let's look, in, if you may, in Genesis, or, or Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Matthew chapter 1, verse 1. Now I want you to see something here that's very interesting. It says here, now we're... We're talking about the birth of Christ. And it says, The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, and the son of Abraham. Now you see the lineage here? The lineage here tells us that Jesus came on time through what? Through the promise that God made to Abraham. When he said to Abraham, he said, Through your seed, all people of the earth shall be blessed. All people. In other words, every person that's ever been born would be blessed or have the opportunity of that blessing through the seed of Abraham. And here we find that Christ has come through the lineage of Abraham. But he also said something else. He said, the son of David. The son of David here was the kingship of Israel. Now let me just tell you something, if I may, this morning. When, whenever The reason that David has put in here is that David's kingdom would never be dissolved. The Bible tells us that, that the, the throne of David would be forever and when Jesus comes back to this earth, the Messiah, he will come back to Jerusalem and he will come back and take the throne of David. And he will rule from the throne of David. This is included in the genealogy of Christ. So he came through the promise of Abraham. And he's going to be one day be king over all the world. You see, when Jesus in Matthew is portrayed, he is portrayed as a king. That's why Matthew used David. That's why he used the throne of David. You see, Jesus came. He came as the Messiah. He came as one who would offer the kingdom to the nation of Israel. But they rejected him. They rejected the kingdom. Why? Because they would not accept him as Savior first. You see, even though Jesus come to be the king of Israel, that little baby come to be king, but he was going to have to die first. Israel could not see the death of Christ as a payment for their sins. They did not celebrate his death. They did not receive the deliverance that Christ come to give. It's a sad picture for them. That's why our Lord's heart was broken when he withdrew the kingdom from them. And then the kingdom, or the grace of God, was offered to us to the Gentiles also. So you see here, the lineage is important. Now, because we have believed in Christ, we celebrate today. Why? Because we're part of the seed of Abraham now, because we're part of the seed of Christ. 
We have received Christ as our Savior. And Christ came through the seed of Abraham. My goodness. Abraham himself in Genesis chapter 12 verses 1 through 3 talked about the promise. In Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 through 7, David or Isaiah talked about the, the kingship of David and how that the Lord would come and he would be, he would be the counselor, the governor. He would be the ruler of all of the land. But this, this Savior, notice what he said also in verse 23. This little baby that we have a symbol of right here. It says here, talking about the lynch, he said, Behold, a virgin shall be with a child and bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is which me being interpreted God with us. Jesus Christ, Emmanuel, God with us. Where do we see that at? We see that in Genesis 3.15. Whenever our Lord told Eve, Adam and Eve said this, I will. I will bring forth a seed that will bruise his head. And then in, when Abraham is taking Isaac up on the mountain of Moriah in Genesis 22, and Isaac said to Abraham, said, Father, where's the sacrifice? And Abraham said, God, will provide the sacrifice himself. So we see this is the sacrifice. This is the Christ, God, Emmanuel, who is with us. When you, can you see the lineage of how much God loves us and what God has done for us? Now we find, we go back to time, and we find here three periods of time. I don't know whether you've paid any attention to this, but look in Matthew chapter 1, verse 17. It's a very interesting scripture. <clears throat> it says this, And so all the generations from Abraham to David, using the same principle as they did in the first verse. So all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. And from David until the carrying away unto Babylon are 14 generations. And from the carrying away unto Babylon unto Christ are 14 generations. You think God didn't know what he was doing? You think God didn't have his timing and his lineage right? But I think this morning about these things. What does, what does the number 14 mean? What, what does that mean to us? It means deliverance. 14 means deliverance. So then the promise that he made to Abraham was a promise of deliverance. Fourteen years later, we find David as king, and we find, again, deliverance, because from there to Babylon, they went into captivity, and they was delivered from the Babylonian captivity and came back to Jerusalem. And from that time to the birth of Christ was 14 more years. Every time you see that 14, you'll find that it's associated with deliverance. And when we read that, we find how that God, all through the ages, those three different times God provided the deliverance that we all needed. Through that little baby, God has provided the deliverance for all of us. Let us get our focus upon Christ and not the things of this world and think about how God loved us so much that Christ came to deliver us. 14. 
It's always interesting that with the number 14, there always goes another number. When you find that number 14, you'll find the number 3. The number 3. Number 3 means resurrection. Resurrection. Let me give you some examples. When Jonah was in the belly of, of the whale, and there God dealt with him. But he was in there three days, and he was resurrected. The whale spit him out on the shore. Jesus used it as an illustration. He said, as the Son of Man, as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, so must the Son of Man be in the earth three days and three nights. Jesus, when he died on the cross, was placed in a tomb. And on the third day, he came forth and was resurrected. But let me ask you something else. How many of you know what day Jesus was crucified on? The 14th. The 14th day Jesus was crucified and three days later he came forth from the grave. Listen, how could we ever doubt the word of God? How, how could we ever lay it aside and say that it's just a book? No, this isn't. This is the heart of God. This is the timing of God. This is the love of God. This is the deliverance of God. I heard a preacher say the other last night that the next thing that our country will do was, is to rewrite the Word of God. They'll rewrite the Word of God. You know why? To try to conform it to the culture of hell and sin in this world today. But they'll not They'll not retranslate God's word. They'll not change it. I can tell you that much right now. They may try, but they won't. It's settled forever in heaven. And God's timing is so beautiful. God's timing is so precious to all of us. Three has to do with the resurrection. Did you know that Israel departed from Egypt on the 14th day? They were delivered from Israel or from Egypt on the 14th day. And they started on a journey to the promised land. They traveled three days and then they went through the Red Sea. With a wall of water on each side of them, they went into the bottom of the Red Sea. And when they come out of the other side of the Red Sea, it was three days after they had left Egypt. And it was a time of resurrection. It had, they, had, they had been set free and they had been through the Dead Sea, and they were celebrating what God had done for them. In Exodus chapter 15, verses 1 and 2, listen to what he said. Exodus 15. After they had come through the Red Sea, listen to what it said. They sang, Mo then sang Moses and the children of Israel this song unto the Lord, and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously over the horse and his rider, hath he thrown into the sea. The Lord is my strength and song. And he has become my salvation. He is my God. And I will prepare him a habitation. My Father God, I will exalt him. No, this morning, 
That's what God is saying to you and I. We ought to be singing. We ought to be exalting the Lord Jesus Christ. The, and the Lord is our strength this morning. And he is our song. And he is our deliverance this morning. You know what he done for me? He resurrected a new kin. And if, he, and if you give your life to Christ, he's resurrected a new you. And because of that resurrection, let's sing the song of praise. Let's exalt him this morning instead of making him just a subject that is passing by. Three days later, they were praising God. Now, when we think about another thought, and that is this, the number 42. You see, 3 times 14 is 42. Well, what does 42 mean? It means oppression. And then it means that the Lord has come. Oppression. So, when God spoke to Abraham. He knew the people wanders under the oppression of sin. And he said, the Lord's coming. There's going to be an advent of the Lord to come. He's coming. And, and when we think of our own life this morning, when we think of the oppression that we were under, when we were lost and in sin. And how the Lord came. In each one of these cases, the Lord saw the oppression of men and came and rescued them and gave them a new life. You find that in another verse. You find that's over in Revelations chapter 13. Look with me there, if you may. Revelations chapter 13. And I want us to look at verse 5. And there was given unto him, this is tribulation period, a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies, and power was given unto him to continue. How long? 42 months. 42 they were, the tribulation period will be a time of oppression. It will be a time when people will be beat down like never before. But also 42 is saying, but there is coming a Christ. There is coming a Christ to lift the believers out of this oppression. This morning... When we think about Christmas time, and I've gave you these numbers, and most of the time these numbers are just boring to people. But these numbers are all important. Why? Because they speak of Christ. They speak of the plan of God. They speak of how that God has laid things out. This baby that we celebrate here in D.C. came on God's time. This baby came for a purpose. And that purpose was to save us from the oppression that sin was bringing on our life. And, and yet, we want to turn the season into nothing but partying and money making. We want to just turn it into anything but Christ. And it's wrong, church. It's wrong. We must keep that Focus and remember that this time and timing and lineage of the birth of Christ is everything. And you know what? I was talking yesterday. When's Christ coming back? We as a church are under oppression today. When is Christ coming back? On his timing. He's got a time set. That he's coming back to get his bride. 
And, 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 the, and the Lord, I just kind of thought about that, and, and, and a thought came to me. Christ will come back when the last person comes to know Christ. And God has built the last place in heaven for his believers. And that's when he'll say, son, go get, go get, go get your bride. You see, we are the bride of Christ. We're not the kingdom. We're the bride. And we're looking for a groom. We're not looking for a king. We're looking for a groom to come get us. We'll be a part of his kingdom in the end. But that's all in his timing also. Right now we are his bride. And he's asking us as a church and as his bride, be faithful to me. Don't cheat on me. Don't be a harlot to me. Don't, put, don't, don't take no other gods. Don't put no other gods before me. Don't love nothing else before me. Just love me. I've loved you. I've chose your timing. I went through the right process to make this day and time of celebration available to each of us. Let us not pass it up. Let us bow our heads in a word of prayer, and she's going to play an invitation. If anybody here don't know Christ this morning, this is your timing. This is your timing. What will it be? What will it be? Are you going to pass up this time? Or are you going to receive Christ 